Hello, Hello citizens, citizens of the world. We, we are, are anonymous. anonymous. Greetings citizens of this world. Thank you for participating in the anonymous dump of Antifa. We have a few more ideas that will surely have these fucktards in a childish tantrum but once again we ask you to refrain from using the anonymous idea for your communist agendas. What is Antifa you ask? The idea of Antifa, short for anti-fascism, has become a fixture in America's popular imagination in the wake of President Donald Trump's election, albeit in a way that tends to have very little basis in reality. The group, Antifa which has no formal organizational structure, and is best defined as a tactic associated with protesting against the threat of fascism, has been falsely blamed for everything from the deadly mass shooting in Las Vegas to covert collaborations with the Islamic State militant group, ISIS. Now, Antifa is apparently plotting a civil war in the United States that will begin on November 4th. This story which can be found across social media, sometimes attached to the hashtag hash Civil War 2017, is not only utterly fake, it's also potentially dangerous, according to half a dozen activists who spoke to Anonymous. The radical left, so often tarred as irrational, who are calling upon both US and European histories of anti-fascist action to offer practical and serious responses in this political moment. For all the ink spilled about rising fascism, too little has been said about anti-fascism. Anti-fascist, or antifa, doesn't only delineate that which opposes fascism. It is a set of tactics and practices that have developed since the early 20th century, and the rise of fascism in Italy, as a confrontational response to fascist groups, rooted in militant left-wing and anarchist politics. As organizers from anti-fascist research and news site Antifa NYC told the anonymous collective, Antifa combines radical left-wing and anarchist politics, revulsion at racists, sexists, homophobes, anti-Semites, and Islamophobes, with the international anti-fascist culture of taking the streets and physically confronting the brown shirts of white supremacy, whoever they may be. As with fascisms, not all anti-fascisms are the same, but the essential feature is that anti-fascism does not tolerate fascism, it would give it no platform for debate. The history of anti-fascism in 20th century Europe is largely one of fighting squads, like the international militant brigades fighting Franco in Spain, the Red Front Fighters League in Germany who were fighting Nazis since the party's formation in the 1920s the print workers who fought ultra-nationalists in Austria, and the 43 group in England fighting Oswald Mosley's British Union of Fascists. In every iteration these mobilizations entailed physical combat. The failure of early 20th century fighters to keep fascist regimes at bay speaks more to the paucity of numbers than the problem of their direct confrontational tactics. A more recent history of Antifa in both Europe and the United States illustrates the success these tactics can have, particularly when it comes to expunging violent racist forces from our neighborhoods and defending vulnerable communities, while also creating networks of support that do not rely on structurally racist law enforcement for protection against racists. Anti-fascist tactics focused primarily around physical force proved effective in forcing neo-Nazi groups out of entire neighborhoods in Europe and the United States in the 1980s. Back then, as longtime organizer and member of the Industrial Workers World General Defense Committee GDC, Kieran Knutson told the nation, fascist and anti-fascist formations grew out of youth subculture scenes taking on and largely defeating neo-Nazi gangs, multiracial crews of anti-racist skinheads and punks coalesced and grew into semi-formal anti-racist action ARA, chapters nationwide. At its peak, in an era without cell phones or internet, ARA had over 100 chapters across the US and Canada, explained Knutson, adding that students, older leftists, feminists and more joined efforts to counter a broader group of racist organizations, from the white power music scene to KKK rallies. The network faded in the 2000s, 
drifting in part to the anti-globalization movement, but as Knutson the several thousand veterans of this movement are still out there, many still involved politically in anti-racist, feminist, queer, labor, education and artistic projects. The need for this sort of community and street resistance will not be contingent on the president carrying out repressive policies, the emboldening of far-right racists is a fait accompli. At the end of November, the Southern Poverty Law Center released a report documenting nearly 900 separate incidents of bias and violence against immigrants, Latinos, African Americans, women, LGBT people, Muslims and Jews in the 10 days that followed Trump's win. Physical confrontation is just a big aspect of Antifa direct action, but the history of anti-fascist, anti-racist action is not one of so-called allies standing in polite disapproval or donning safety pins. Fascism is imbued with violence and secures itself politically through the use or threat of it. So it is inevitable that anti-fascists have to countenance some involvement in violence themselves. The ability to countenance some involvement with violence is itself a privilege that so many people of color and LBGTQ individuals in this country cannot enjoy. Violence is not countenanced but systematically thrust upon them. The question of whether the counter-violence should be a tool of resistance in these political days will no doubt cleave some anti-Trump unities currently breaching the liberal center, the left, and far left. As in Ferguson, as in Baltimore, as in Watts, as in counter-riots against the Ku Klux Klan, as in slave revolts, know where we stand. The number of people willing to engage with explicitly anti-fascist organizing and rhetoric has certainly increased with this administration rise, as an empirical measure, our Twitter followers have almost quadrupled from the beginning of this year, organizers for NYC Antif told me via email, new groups are popping up everywhere, and we are fielding requests from all over the country about how to get involved. Whether this means a significant number of people are willing to engage in anti-fascist physical confrontation in this administration's America remains to be seen. For us at Anonymous Believe. The puppet show is just that might as well come out with a show titled The American Puppet Politicians. We don't think it's useful to rehash the same old, violence versus non-violence, arguments. If this administration tries to register Muslims and engage in mass deportations, a change.org petition is not going to stop it. But the old canard of violent versus non-violent protest is already finding a new locus in debates around whether or not to give the racist far-right a platform. When neo-Nazi Richard Spencer at his National Policy Institute held their annual conference in DC last November, Anti-fascist activists exposed the event, its attendees, and where its members were dining, and attempted to not only protest but disrupt and shut down the conference, as well as Spencer's dinner plans, succeeding, at least, in dousing the white nationalist in a foul-smelling liquid. News and monitoring sites like NYC Antifa, Anti-fascist news and its going down have been reporting on the NPI, exposing their members and their conferences since before Trump's candidacy. The NPI's cycling and fashion sense is a trending topic covered by most major media outlets, yet, for the most part, all these journalists do is reproduce Spencer's and Milo Yiannopoulos. Sentiments, which he frames rhetoric to gain appeal, and feign outrage. Anonymous approaches to expose and try to redirect them with knowledge of who is supporting their agenda and why. The forms of physical force that served against neo-Nazis in the street in the 1980s are harder to deploy against the contemporary suit-clad neo-Nazi holding a conference with professional security details, or a position in the White House. For one, fascism lends itself to meme form as fascist form itself purports to give a simple solution to a complex problem, memes aren't inherently fascist, of course, but their reductive format is well suited to fascist content. But weaponizing meme form is, we believe, easier for a political project that itself takes the form of reduction and oversimplification. The Antifa task, 
we believe, is not to make better memes, but to expose the fascists behind the peep avatars, reveal their connections, and chase them away. Committed neo-Nazis deserve no more privacy than they deserve public platforms, or safety, even though Antifa groups have been known to grant second chances. We've had success with this tactic, and have gotten people to leave groups who did not want to be publicly shamed, the NYC Antifa organizers told Anonymous Collective. One guy's boss was Jewish and he didn't want it known he was working with Holocaust deniers. We took him off our website after he promised to leave the group he was in. We believe second chances are important, our goal is to get people to leave racist and fascist movements. Antifa might not seek us in the streets, and might trance us in trolling, but disruption, confrontation, doxxing and altercation remain tactics anyone taking seriously a refusal to normalize Trump era fascism should consider. For the radical left with Antifa, Black Lives Matter, no such bad thought takes hold, because militant tactics against white supremacy never stop being necessary. In the fight against slavery, Jim Crow, redlining, and mass incarceration, with or without explicit white nationalists in center political stage. Do you follow this banner? Antifa banner. The flag of self-proclaimed Antifa? If so, then you are being deceived. You are being used to bring forth the ideology of that which you think you stand against. Are you anonymous? Then you are against the Antifa movement and its infiltration upon the idea of anonymous. Antifa promotes hate and violence. Anonymous stands for justice, peace, freedom, truth, and love. Anonymous is the voice of the people. Anonymous never has, nor ever will be associated with any government, political movement, organization or group. Anonymous is an idea, an idea that will not change. The idea of Anonymous is driven by those that think it into existence. The controlled opposition of Antifa is driven by blind fools, actors and agents. Wake up from the brainwashing, the elites are masters of deception, yet the elites will never be masters of Anonymous. If you are looking for a socialist one world totalitarian government then Antifa is for you. You would then be in elegance with the likes of scumbags such as Bill Ayers and George Soros. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. You should have expected us.